This meeting is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 6 at sec, notice of which was sent to the record in the Star Ledger and was posted on the Municipal Bulletin Board. Okay, roll call please. Councilmember Von Rudenberg. Here. Deputy Mayor Constrino. Here. Deputy Mayor Sims. Here. Councilmember Battaglia. Here. Mayor LaBros. Here. And everybody please rise for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I believe we have a few uh, to take care of this evening. Do we have them in order? They're in alphabetical order. I put them in alphabetical order because I didn't know what other orders put them in. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Anthony de Persia, please come forward and bring forward anybody with you who's like up here. Persia, put your right hand in the Bible, raise your left hand, repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and in this state. Under the, authority under the authority of the people, of the people and, that I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially and, justly perform and justly perform all the duties of the rank of, the of, the rank of lieutenant, lieutenant according, to the best of my according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Anthony Natal, please come forward and bring up whoever you would like. After me, please. I state your name. I, Anthony Do solemnly swear, Do solemnly swear that, I the that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the United States and, the and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith, bear true faith and, allegiance and allegiance to the same, to the same and, to the and to the governments established in the United States, in the United States and in this state, in this state under the authority of the people and that I will faithfully impartially and justly perform all the duties of the rank of lieutenant according to the best of my ability so help me God congratulations Next up, Mr. James Smith, please. What's 
Chav. Can you hold the Bible? Put your right hand on the Bible, raise your left hand, and please repeat after me. I, James Smith, I, James Smith do, solemnly do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and in this state under the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of the rank of lieutenant according to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Mr. Ryan Weber, please come forward and bring up whoever you would like to bring up. So early. Be <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to be a police to go to the academy and everything? It's a lot of work. <laughs> okay, please repeat after me. I, Ryan Weber, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of New Jersey, that it will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and in this state under the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of the rank of lieutenant according to the best of my ability so help me God congratulations lieutenant mr. Gregory Ziza please come forward and bring up anybody you would like to come up come on guys <laughs> sure Come on up. Why not? The more the merrier. <coughs> Who's holding the Bible? <laughs> right hand on the Bible, raise your left hand and repeat after me. I, Gregory Ziza, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and in this state under the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of the rank of lieutenant according to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So, help me God. so help me God. Congratulations, Lieutenant. <laughs> Don't forget the sign. All right. Uh, Pete, would you like to say anything or anybody? I just want to thank uh, the mayor, the council, the city manager for uh, promoting uh, all these uh, lieutenants. Uh, I think you got a good, good bunch of guys here. Yeah, they're good. They're well deserved, and we appreciate the uh, the help and the support. We really do. And uh, to the city manager, too. Thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Everybody, stay safe. That's the most important thing. Okay. Madam Clerk. Um, on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. We're going to do a K 
Cow in the regular minutes for 521 and 611 19 together. Everybody was here. And that's for the Cow and regular. Any motion? Need a motion for the minutes of uh, May 21st and June 11th. June 11th of 2019, please. Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Okay, and then the next one is going to be for July 25th for the regular meeting only because we had no count. Okay, need a motion for the regular meeting of June 25th, 2019. Offer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. Okay. Okay, manager's report, please. Yes. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is the City Manager's Report for July 22nd, 2019. For all those that didn't realize or weren't aware, today at 3.30 we had the dedication of the M&M building. Um, when you get a chance, obviously there will be a, a complete open house grand opening scheduled in late August or September. But it truly is a beautiful building and I think it will serve the city and it goes to the credit of the mayor and council for you know making a decision staying on the path and creating what i think is a really good recreational space for our youth and also for seniors to use uh, first is our summer concert series has begun our next concert is scheduled for tomorrow night on the green performance will be by the b street band at 7 30. hackensack next food truck friday will be friday july 26 from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Courthouse Green. Our last food truck Friday will be on August 2nd. Come join the food, music, and fun. Please be advised that starting July 29th through August 2nd, the Moore Street Railroad Crossing will undergo rehabilitation. Detours will be in place. Number four, Johnson Public Library is now fine free. We are the first library in Bergen County to do this. We encourage everyone to visit and take advantage of the city resource. The building department update, 201 notices were written, 409 inspections were made, 28 summonses were issued, 31 CCOs were done, 42 OPA requests were fulfilled. Don't forget the HPAC is hosting a Sunset Yoga Friday night mini concert and Shakespeare in the park along with many other events Please refer to the HACPAC.org listing for summer events. Finally, the city just hosted a dedication of the, the ceremony of the m and The new facility is in place. It will be open um, for full usage on August 12th. Thank you so much. And that completes the city manager's report. Okay, I need to... Uh... Continue with new business, resolution 303-19. Resolution 303-19 is a resolution for final adoption of ordinance number 33-2019, a bond ordinance amending and supplementing bond ordinance number 33-2018. Heretofore, finally adopted July 23rd, 2018, entitled Bond Ordinance Providing for Parking Garage and Lot Improvements by and in the City of Hackensack in the County of Bergen, State of New Jersey appropriating $1,300,000 therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 1,300,000 bonds or notes to finance the cost thereof, to increase the appropriation therein by $2 million and to increase the authorization of bonds or notes thereby, therein by $2 million to finance the additional cost thereof. This ordinance has been advertised pursuant to law and now calls for a public hearing. Okay, I need a motion to open to the public, please. Offered. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. Anybody from the public who'd like to speak to Ordinance 303-19, please come forward. Seeing no one from the public, motion to close to the public. Offer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. Need a motion to adopt the ordinance? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Be it resolved by the City <clears throat> Council of the City of Hackensack County of Bergen and State of New Jersey that Ordinance Number 33-2019 has passed the second and final reading and is hereby adopted. Thank you. Resolution 304-19. This is a resolution for final adoption of Ordinance Number 34-2019, an ordinance to amend Chapter 170 of the Code of the City of Hackensack Vehicles and Traffic to formally establish handicapped parking spaces in Section 49.2, Parking for the Handicapped within Fashini Park. 
This ordinance has been advertised pursuant to law and now calls for a public hearing. Need a motion to open to the public? Second. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. None opposed? Anybody from the public who'd like to speak on resolution 304-19, please come forward. Seeing no one from the public, motion to close. Offer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed? Motion to adopt the ordinance? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed? Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Hackensack County of Bergen and State of New Jersey that ordinance number 34-2019 has passed its second and final reading and is hereby adopted. Thank you. Resolution 305-19. This is a resolution for the introduction of ordinance number 35-2019, an ordinance to amend and supplement chapter 170 of the code of the city of Hackensack vehicles and traffic to clarify language relating to residents only on street parking. Need a motion, please? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed? Be it resolved that the above ordinance being <coughs> ordinance 35-2019 right. is introduced, is now passed on first reading, and that said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on August 20th, 2019 at 8 o'clock p.m., or as soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the City Council, and at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the city clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with notice of its introduction and passage on first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Thank you. Resolution 30619. This is a resolution for the introduction of ordinance number 36-2019, an ordinance to amend and update chapter 89 of the code of the city of Hackensack flood hazard areas to be in compliance with current standards as promulgated by state and federal authorities. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Be resolved that the above ordinance being ordinance 36-2019 is introduced is now passed on first reading. And that said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on August 20th, 2019. At 8 o'clock p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter can be reached to the regular meeting place of the city council. And at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the city clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with a notice of its introduction and passage on first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Thank you. Resolution 307-19. This is a resolution approving relocation of the sewer line on property owned by RFEHA Urban Renewal LLC and to amend original sewer easement. Need a motion, please? Offer. Certainly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed? Resolution 308-19. It's a resolution authorizing tax appeal attorney to settle the cases on the attached list dated July 15th, 2019 that were scheduled for trial or settlement. Need a motion, please? Offer. Second. I'm sorry, who seconded? Need a second. Okay. They do. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unopposed? Resolution 309-19. A resolution authorizing tax appeal attorney to settle the cases on the attached list dated July 22nd, 2019, that were scheduled for trial or settlement. Need a motion, please? All Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? Resolution 310-19. Resolution authorizing the tax collector to convert below charges to property liens as for NJSA 40 colon 40-2.14. Need a motion, please? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? <clears throat> Was that 310? Yes. You're Resolution 311-19. Resolution authorizing the City of Hackensack to purchase and install two bus shelters from New Jersey Transit at the Central Avenue and State Street bus stop and the State and at State and the State Street bus stop. Any motion, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed? Resolution 312-19. It's a resolution authorizing tax refund for state board judgment. Any motion, please? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed? Resolution 313-19. This is a resolution authorizing change order number one to Dormafowski Engineering for Clerk of the Work Services for the M&M &M Recreation Building Renovation Project. Need a motion, please? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? 
<clears throat> resolution 314-19. This is a resolution authorizing award of contract for engineering services to suburban consulting engineers for the city hall facade repairs. Need a motion, please? Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed? Resolution 315-19. A resolution authorizing award of contract for engineering services to suburban consulting engineers for River Street sanitary sewer improvements. Need a motion, please? Offer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. Resolution 316-19. This is a resolution authorizing award of contract for engineering services to suburban consulting engineers for Johnson Park Sports Facility design documentation and permitting. Motion, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? Resolution 317-19. A resolution authorizing change orders 28 through 31 in the amount of $360,201.82 to Two Brothers Contracting for the M&M Recreation Building Renovation Project. Thank you. Need a motion. Need a motion, please. Offer. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? And Resolution 318-19. A resolution approving relocation of sewer line on property owned by RFEHA Urban Renewal LLC to amend original sewer easement. Need a motion? Offer. Need a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed? Resolution to pay the bills. This is resolution 319-19, resolution authorizing payment of bills. Okay. Or if we do the... Need a motion. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Need a motion, please, to pay the bills. Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now the bills are paid. Before we go through the consent agenda, does anybody have a conflict? Nobody up here? Nothing, nothing, nothing. I have nothing. Okay, continue with the consent agenda. Okay, the consent agenda consists of resolution 320-19 through 334-19. The following items are considered to be routine in nature and will be enacted in one motion. Any items requiring expenditure are supported by certification of availability of funds. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda and consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes, including any exceptions and or deletions. Resolution 320-19 is a resolution authorizing accrued time payout of $17,876.22 to DPW employee Carl Magby. 321-19 is a resolution authorizing accrued time payout of $43,996.96 to police officer Joseph Gonzalez. Resolution 322-19 is a resolution authorizing accrued time payout of $669.53 to DPW employee Robert Holzman. Resolution 323-19, the resolution authorizing an ambulance reimbursement in the amount of $250. Resolution 324-19 is a resolution awarding professional service agreement to Post Pollock PA, Clyde Otis Esquire, to serve as special counsel for litigation. Resolution 325-19 is a resolution recognizing the Bergen County American Legion Centennial. Resolution 326-19 is a resolution authorizing <coughs> extension to leave of absence without pay for Robert B. Slade, a DPW laborer. Resolution 327-19 is a resolution authorizing raffle licenses for St. Joseph R.C. Church and Fairleigh Dickinson University. Resolution 328-19 is a resolution authorizing recreation department refunds for park security deposits. Resolution 329-19 is a resolution authorizing a new liquor license for Yoshida Enterprises, Inc. pursuant to NJSA 33-1-12.18 for license term 2018-2019. Resolution 330-19 is a resolution authorizing renewal of liquor license for Yoshida Enterprises, Inc. for the license term 2019 to 2020. Resolution 331-19 is a resolution authorizing release of escrow for 67 Summit Avenue. 332-19 is a resolution authorizing release of escrow for 165 Sussex Street. Resolution 333-19 is a resolution authorizing release of escrow for 200 Eileen Terrace. And resolution 334-19 is a resolu resolution authorizing release of escrow for 255 Railroad Avenue. 
Okay, I need a motion to accept the consent agenda as it was read. Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Okay. That was pretty jiffy. Need a motion to uh, open to the public, please? Offer. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Anybody from the public would like to speak, please come forward. Go to the microphone, give your name to the clerk. Hi, uh, Ron Seilheimer here. I'm, uh, my family's owned property in this town 152 years now, since 1867, five generations. And they have property down on Hudson Street. And it's a major flood area. This last week it was flooding bad, but it, that was a problem with the uh, transformer that blew out. So that was fixed. So tonight I have to report that uh, the situation is under control and no flooding. And I, I went down to the pump station tonight and that uh, there was a fellow from the uh, EPW that was down there. His name's Joseph. And he, he was going around to all the pump stations making sure that they work. That's good. I'm, I'm happy to see, see that because before the pumps were just neglected. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they weren't working good. So I, I have to say that progress is being made and I'm glad that the city of Hackensack bought the $400,000 truck to clean out the pipes instead of utilizing a, a company down in Kearney called um, uh, National Water Main. Mm -hmm. And um, now the truck you know, I just like to know if the truck can come on Hudson Street and then work down Wysocki Place and work down Kennedy Street to the pump station and flush out these pipes real good. Because I, I go down to the uh, pump station in the pouring rain and I stand alongside the pumps with my umbrella and I, I watch the pumps working and I have to report that all three of them are working now. Because in the past, the pump, the middle pump was, was broken for a long time. But all three pumps are working. They work in the sequence, pump one and three and two and back to one again. But they only run for about um, 20 to 30 seconds. Th th then they, they have to wait for more water to come in. I, I think that the pipes are clogged and have to be uh, flushed out good. And, and then uh, that would alleviate all the flooding. And okay. uh, I, I have to report that the city manager is doing a good job. I appreciate this. that. I'm sure he does too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm giving him the eye to go check out Hudson Kennedy and what was the other yeah. street? Uh, Wysocki Place. Wysocki Place. Place. Yeah, that's a former Bank Street. Yep. J just for the record, the um, new truck, the crew that's assigned to that truck, um, which are virtually new employees, um, We've re-engineered ourselves in responding to these needs. <coughs> um, the truck has, has helped us immeasurably. So right this minute, we have a list of streets that we're doing, and those streets are on that list. We also have basically an emergent situation. So when we have cases of people call up and said this is blocked or plugged or whatever, we slide them to the top of the list, obviously, because of the needs. But we will get to every one of those streets, and we have spent quite a little time down in the first ward in Hudson and some of those streets because you were 100% correct. Prior to um, my service, um, not much was addressed as far as the street flooding down there, but the council are committed to make sure that we um, resolve these flooding conditions. Um, people have complained about it and they brought the pictures up that showed that it was you know like Lake Erie out there um, this has to be resolved. We have uh, two engineering firms working on a design that will resolve um, our water issue. Obviously, the people that have lived here as long as you have, the railroad holds it. You know, we're almost like a soup bowl here. The river, uh, the railroad tracks hold part of the water. The Hudson River, um, Hackensack River, obviously isn't helping us. So we have to find some way to pump this water past that because it just keeps back flowing back into the city. Okay. Well, um, I'd like to see the truck along, you know, f flush these pipes out really good. We're on it. Okay. Because uh, I, I clean the catch basin in front. I have uh, 
two houses on Hudson Street. I have a, a, a big 12,000 square foot building. I have another building on Washington Avenue. And, uh, he, you know, I have tenants here, so, so I, I, they, they keep, keep complaining to me. Understood. So, but, but he's uh, going to... He, if he's, he's a man of his word, if he said they're getting there, they're going to get there, believe and me. And I have to report that uh, the progress is, is good, it's steady. You know, just for that little setback <coughs> last week with that transformer blow, that, was, it, we had it, no that could yeah. be helped. They, they said maybe a lightning could have hit the wire or something, right. but uh, that's fixed. And I, I'm <coughs> glad to report that they put it up on a platform, so it's about uh, three feet off the ground. Oh, that was smart. You know? Good. And, and the PSENG took care of that problem. All right. Thank you. So. Thank you, Mr. Seidner. Okay. Thank you, sir. Next, please. Good evening. Randy Glover, Hackensack. Hey, and I'm you? also the creator and producer of the Main Street Live concert series, <laughs> hijacked to now be called the Summer Sounds of Summer concert series. Uh, on Friday, July 12th, the fight for the heart and soul of Hackensack began. It's the tale of two Hackensacks, the one Hackensack of politicians, developers, and businessmen, the other, all of us. It's about a hijacked music series, Main Street Live. The division in Hackensack is not black and white, it's politics, developers, and money. It's about the steering of projects. It's about unilateral control of our town. For three years, I've run the Main Street concert series in Hackensack at the Atlantic Street Park an event I created. The series celebrated the diversity of our town. Originally, this summer music event was all about diversity, Latin culture, Caribbean culture, the LGBTQ culture, African American culture, and the so-called mainstream culture. Uh, we're all represented in a series of weekly concerts during the summer months. Now the series has been taken away, hijacked from me. More importantly, it's been taken away from the people of Hackensack. They falsely boast of what they, the artistic director of Hackensack, the mayor, the city council, have been producing. And I say, really? What have they been producing for roughly 30 years or close to a million dollars are the concerts on the courthouse green and Shakespeare in the Park. My small production that cost a little over $30,000 over three years <clears throat> did what they couldn't do with close to a million dollars in over multiple decades, introduce Hackensack to Hackensack. So now hijack our event and change the name to Sounds of Summer. Celebration of the LGBTQ community, what's that? Are you surprised at the Board of Education and the board members' comments recently exposed? Middle Eastern celebration, why? We need bona fide country and classic rock. Scholarships for our kids, no longer in the program. It's only music. Celebrate local residents with congressional certificates and county uh, proclamations? No way. Success not only breeds contempt, but for the powerful, the political, and those elements in the shadows lack of control. The not so funny aspect of that triad is that any resources they use to fight us belongs to us. So Hackensack, here we are again. Where do you stand? Well, our town, the citizens of Hackensack, do what they, the Hackensack's administration, expect us to do, nothing. Are they right, or will we, the people of Hackensack, stand together? So we ask, stand with us against discrimination and injustice. Voice your opinion and protest by boycotting these events. Diversity is what Hackensack is about. Join us in the boycott as we work to bring back the original Main Street concert series. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Good evening, Carolyn Davis, Hackensack. Ms. Davis. Um, the city manager, I did tell you before that our streets are still doing fine. We still get some water, but not the flooding. Like I had to bring those pictures to you to before. And again, I thank you because when I do call you, you do respond. And I appreciate that. Um, my, very quickly here, the three minute policy. I just want to know when that was, you have to answer now. When that was started, I know it's in your policy like the Board of Bed, it's up to you, you can make a decision how long people have to speak. But I think for adults who pay taxes in the city, three minutes is an insult. So just wanna put that out there. So I think you can reconsider giving people a little bit more time. I know sometimes you let them go over, but I feel the same way about the Board of Bed. 
three minutes. We're, we're not children, we're adults who deserve the right to be able to speak our minds without rushing. Um, I was employed at Hackensack Medical Center for 42 years, from 1967 until 2009 when I retired. <clears throat> Anybody that knows me there from Hackensack will know I always spoke out for what was right. Some of those people are not there. But I will tell you, Carolyn always stood for right. I didn't care about my job. I didn't care about how much time I had put in, but I was going to stand for right. You can ask anybody. I worked for Dr. Mark Schlesinger. He will tell you that I was going to stand for what's right. Years ago, Don Imus, one of the example, just to tell you a little bit my, by my, about myself. Don, Don Imus made a comment about the African-American girls who are on the Rutgers basketball team. It was a very negative comment. I wrote to the head of the hospital about it because I waited two days to see what they were going to say, since they have so many African-American employees mm -hmm. who work for that hospital, who work for a long time, and I wanted to see what the hospital stance was going to be. Were they going to keep silent when so many of their employees were insulted, or were they going to say something? So when I didn't hear anything, I wrote them a letter, and I demanded that the hospital take a stand, because even though he donates a lot of money to the hospital, he'd insulted a lot of their employees. They finally did. So I'm just letting you know that this is who I am. I'm not here grandstanding for anybody else. This is Carolyn. This is 70, 71 years of being this way. I want to stand for what's right. Number one, two, I, I agree with Randy. I think what happened to the summer series is a disgrace. They were popular. They were going well. There was no trouble. Everybody was represented. So I think it's sad that that happened, but I want everybody to know down in history, it's not forgotten that Randy Glover is the one who started those series. I just want to say this about your comment, Mayor, at the end of the last meeting mm -hmm. about when things were said about blacks in the community and there was no commotion. I'm paraphrasing, not exactly. I must not have heard about that because I sure would have made a commotion, knowing who I am. Um, but just because there's a commotion and no one says anything doesn't mean that it's right and that it should continue. Uh, I certainly don't remember hearing it. No one spoke about um, the molestation of children a lot that was going on by Catholic priests until it was exposed. Mm -hmm. Somebody should have said something. No one spoke about things that were going on during the Civil Rights Movement until it was exposed. So my thing is this, whether there's a commotion or not, it doesn't matter what happened 50 years ago. If someone has said something, like Ms. Kajelja, that is offensive to people in the community, it does not matter what happened years ago. We have to take a stand now for what's right. She offended a lot of people. You did back her, and something should have been done. You can't make her resign, but to sit there and say that one, two, three, well, one, two, three, four, five, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm pointing, but I'm counting. One, two, three, four, five people decided that what she did, you accepted it. You're not the whole community. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Good evening. My name is Caitlin Duran, and I'm the volunteer coordinator for Hackensack Riverkeeper. And I'm very glad I came tonight because I was unaware of your CSO survey. And of course, I circled extremely important for issues about water quality in the Hackensack River. But I'm actually not here to talk about CSOs. I'm actually here to commend the work of the Clean Communities Program here in Hackensack and to just check in with you since it's, we're in the middle of our, of our busiest season at Hackensack Riverkeeper. Um, since early spring, Riverkeeper has organized 23 river cleanups along the Hackensack River watershed, including one in partnership with the city of Hackensack for Slam Dunk the Junk, your townwide cleanup event. Uh, so far, our organization has mobilized over 700 volunteers to pick up approximately 14,500 pounds of trash, tires, and debris from the Hackensack River. Um, we're able to do this work in part through the support of the City of Hackensack and your Clean Communities Program, who gave us and other participants a small grant. Um, it was an important day, not just for stewardship of public lands, but also very important for the education on the types of pollution that are threatening our natural resources. So basically, I'm here to commend the work of Greg and Frank and the whole team at uh, the Clean Communities Program. Um, for their out-of-the-box thinking, their constant support of our program, which dovetails with their own, and for their continued efforts via the Cultural Arts Department, it really keeps me inspired to come to work every day 
and often every weekend day. So uh, thank you. Just wanted to put that all. Appreciate out there. that. Yep. Thank you, Caitlin. And say hi to uh, to Bill for everybody and uh, Mr. Corolla, right? Yes. Yes. Tell him we said hello. Thank you. Next, please. I'm Junius Jeff Carter, uh, president of Bergen County NAACP. It has been brought to my attention um, that, uh, let me start off by saying, as an elected official, you take the oath to uphold the law, whether we agree or disagree with the law. If we, if we disagree, there's processes and procedures to change uh, the law. Every law is not necessarily a good law. We know we had Jim Crow laws, other things, of that nature. Um, in the state of New Jersey, um, we'll back up, let me go. Uh, Ms. Cajella, um, and if, I apologize if I messed up her name, uh, the law was passed uh, for, you know, to introduce uh, history in the school district. Um, as an elected official, our, com our personal views do not matter. When you send emails that are hurtful, um, disenfranchised people, that's a problem. Um, you know, when you're elected, you take the oath for the Board of Ed what's in the best interest of the children. If the law isn't right, you don't like the law, then you probably go through processes to change it. We're in a part of the time now where our words matter. Civility is not a word that's been ripped out of the dictionary with our president and things like that. Mr. Mayor, it was brought to my attention um, that you said there was a Board of Education before uh, this city that asked people of color to move out of this city and there was no boo-hoo about it. It's politics. Your words matter, Mr. Mayor. Your, your words hurt people um, who have been disenfranchised, who have uh, gone through civil rights, who have, um, you know, been put upon, not fair jobs. Our ancestors, not only African American, but Hispanics and anybody who came over here. So I ask that you need to apologize to the people of the city in Hackensack, apologize to the people in uh, of Bergen County, because as an elected official, your words matter. Excuse me, apologize for what, sir? What, did, um, what words did I say? Uh, it was brought to what I just said. Uh, that there was a Board of Education before this city that asked people of color to move out of this city and that there was no boo-hoo yeah. Correct. It. You were correct. A okay. Board of Education member stood where you're standing with the rest of the Board of Ed sitting there and <laughs> it's ironic because you want to talk about politics. The color I was talking about was red. Not black or yellow or green or purple. It was red. With the other color being blue. So it was purely okay. politics. And he was telling the public at large with white people, African Americans, everybody here, Americans, that Republicans should not live in Hackensack or Bergen County. And I took offense to that because they're Americans too. And where are we going if we're going to tell one political party they can't live in a certain area of this country? So I am not apologizing for anything because I didn't make those comments. You should be going to Mr. Uh, Daniel Carolla who made those comments. But was a city board member, and his board president sat here while it was said. So okay, well, they, if, if if I was wrong, I apologize uh, to you for you that. Should sir, because to say that um, publicly but, that I made a racial statement, which I've never done. Okay, but again, uh, from the NAACP, as I said, civility matters. I believe in civility too, and, 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 I, and I I made my comments and, about and, Mrs. Kajelja. Okay, and, and everybody. I had a personal matter. conversation with Mrs. Kajelja. And I understand exactly where she's coming from. This is about the law that's being, that was passed and is going into effect. Not about her feelings personally about whether somebody is gay or not or, or part of the LGBT com community. That was her feelings. Now, the way she went about it was harsh and it came across very hard. But I tell you right now, it's about the law. And I got to be honest with you, sir. There's a lot of people have a lot of questions about this law. And I don't know if everybody in this room has read this law and is aware of how deep it goes, okay? Uh, again, as I led off with the comments, 
If it is law, then it is law. There, there have been laws that I, are not I, necessarily And I disagree laws. with your point that it, elect, you know, elected officials have to just go along with it if it's the well, law. I said there's processes to change the law. That's and I, I, I agree with that. And, and I personally, and, and, after reading this, would ask for this law to be amended because I think 10 years old is too young to be teaching anything and, like and, that. And you know what? I, I don't disagree with that. All I'm saying is that but that's what the law, law passed, that's what the law I, I mean, says. Like I said, Jim Crow was the law of the land and and it wasn't a good law and it needed to be changed but it was I agree. Law I agree so if, if if the law was passed I'm not like I said in my statements every law is not necessarily a good law and but there's processes to change that law that's all no okay thank you thank you sir I appreciate your comments thank you next please Deborah Keeling Geddes, Hackensack. Ma'am. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Um, I, too, was watching um, last month's meeting, and I heard um, the comment that um, the mayor made about the Board of Ed asking. But I heard it as, I heard that you said people of color uh, to move out, not. He did. People of color, so so people of color is no people of color would. I was is that you? You a, just, just said Republicans. Of and I actually went to the board of ed meeting, and made the same exact point that when you want all the red to move out of town, okay, when they're all gone, what color is next? I said to them because that was an obscene, absurd comment to say that people of red color, meaning Republicans in his case. And it, it's an analogy, okay? Should not live in Bergen County or in Hackensack. It was totally ridiculous. Okay. Well, the way it came over from well, last at the no last here, meeting, yes. let me let me just say what I'm saying. It came over as people of color, meaning minorities. Right. So that's how I took it. That's why I'm here tonight because I was like. Well, when did this happen? Because I'm usually up on things, was, and I've never heard the Board of Education asking people of color to move out of town. I took advantage of the situation because both the board president at that time and the young man who said it were in the back of this room. So you're talking politically? Absolutely. Okay, but that's not how your comments Absolutely. came over. No, but my point being is we as Americans, it's no different to dis to to discriminate against somebody who is a, a right. different skin exactly. color or exactly. a different political color. But you didn't say politically. You said people of color. That's why, you know, I well, think. I'm sorry for that misunderstanding, but that's not anywhere. That's not what you meant. I was aiming it at those two gentlemen in the back who attacked certain people at that time. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Now, um, about Ms. Kajelja's the, the debacle with that. Now, you guys have worked very hard with the redevelopment. Mm -hmm. Um. And I know your goal is to attract millennials. And I know that a lot of millennials are LGBTQ. Great. Um, and I'm just hoping that your allegiance to Ms. Kajelja doesn't even make one LGBTQ person not want to move to Hackensack. I hope you're right. I hope I'm right too, because listen, you know, we're, we're overcoming stigmas. And we don't need another stigma on us. And this whole debacle, we've gotten some bad press. And I was just saying, you know, with all the redevelopment going on, this has to stop. This has to stop. So that's my comments. Thank Maybe you. Didn't Good cross night. our minds either. Thank you. Next, please. Good evening, Kathleen Talbot. Um, Just a few things. Um, we want to attract people because we're doing all this redevelopment. A lot of negative comments about how we're, we're developing 100% of the land, that we're not having any setbacks, any green, any open space. And, and it's kind of like coming in on us. Um, case in point, M&M building, beautiful building, 100% land coverage. Did you like it? I like the building, but it shouldn't be there. There's not 100% land coverage. I'll say it again. 100% land coverage. We're gonna have major problems with water, sewerage, and, and, and all the above. Um, Mr. City Manager, I mentioned to you, I think the meeting before last, about the five trees. 
that are behind I mean, to get some kind of greenery. That's where we have to put them because there's no place to put them. It's all you know mechanized. The trees that are behind the M and M building, there's five of them, and they they border the curb. And when you step off the curb, you are in a traffic lane. There's no buffer there. There's nothing to stop the, the cars from hitting them. The cars when they go down Lodi Street. They literally hug that curb, and as you can see, all the skid marks on the curb. Those five trees need to be removed. <coughs> and I hope nothing happens because I'm going to hold you personally responsible no, for putting those trees there. You cannot, if a, even a skinny person stands behind there and steps in between those trees onto oncoming track, they're going to be creamed, and those trees need to be removed. Um, also, we have, you know, we, we did a nice facility. It's, it's basketball, basketball, basketball. But we're depriving, we're still depriving two other neighborhoods of basketball. And I keep talking about Qualified Road, that they can't play basketball because of the water problem. The, the, the uh, court hasn't been done in 20 years. Uh, Columbus Park, full of mosquitoes, big, big water problem. Kids can't play there too. And kids do like to play outside and that's a different whole, whole different area. So I don't know what's happening, but all these other things take priority. Uh, what's his name, came up here screaming and they got themselves a community garden. I mean, I'm talking about children with mosquitoes not be able to play basketball for three years and everybody's ignoring the fact that we don't care that these kids in these other two neighborhoods can't play basketball. And it's really bad. Uh, Wayne started it. We were supposed to put retention area there in Columbus Park. You guys went to look to see if the nets were there, you didn't see the flooding or the fact that the, the court you can't play because there's all big gouches and puddles. But we're, I'm still looking for that. Property maintenance, we want to track people, and I keep calling the same things in. You gave me only 20 summonses. I called up for the corner, and I want to say it publicly, the corner of Prospect Avenue and Essex Street. Two big dumpsters, garbage all over the place. The dumpster holder that we always talk about in planning and zoning, that we want them to have holders with, with coverage so we can't see it, broken or apart in that little lot. People come to Hackensack Medical Center, that's what they think of Hackensack. That's a major, major eyesore. I talked about that and kept keep mentioning it. And, oh, oh, the other thing, the most important site, uh, and they t I took over it last year, but I'm not gonna do it this year. Uh, Bahomey Street, that DEP site that we have to clean up, the weeds are taller than I am. There's all mosquitoes in there. The neighbors are just complaining. All right, send, you're, we're past the three, but send property management down there to make sure they deal with that, but make sure there's no issues because it's a, uh, well, what they have That's to do, insane. they have to call the DEP. The DEP has to give us permission to open it. Right. I think the last time we did it, and we send them the bill. But somebody has to coordinate it. And, the, and property maintenance should know this. Everything they do, they have to go back each time because it, it happens again. We shouldn't have to call these things in. And, <clears throat> and mosquitoes are, are running, running rampant. So I don't know what you're going to do about the mosquitoes in Columbus Park, but there's so much water that doesn't go away, and that was supposed to be taken care of. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Alma. Next, please. Nobody from the public? Nobody else? Sir, I know you wanted to say something because I know we're going to talk about crosswalks. Let's see. Martin Smith, 245 Prospect Avenue. I'm a member of the Condo Co-op Advisory Board and a member of the Traffic Safety and Street Lighting Committee. Uh, back in the middle of last year, I presented information to the council concerning the lack of designated crosswalks on certain major streets in Hackensack. Uh, I have to tell you that not just in Hackensack, but in New Jersey in general, we are having a proliferation of pedestrian and vehicle accidents that we haven't seen in a long time. An article I have here, pedestrian deaths highest since 1990, from the Wall Street Journal. This was from February of this past year. A couple of weeks ago, two ladies were killed on Hackensack Avenue in a head-on collision. This past week, a lady drove her car into the Hackensack River, coming out of a car wash. A man fell asleep at his wheel this past week or two weeks ago, hitting a utility pole. This is what's happening out there. We have drivers today who are poorly trained, who do not have any courtesy whatsoever, and who do not know the laws that we have 
controlling our traffic in the city. Um, as far as the streets are concerned, as far as designated crosswalks go, I'd like to give you an example of how I feel that the traffic department works in rather a haphazard fashion. Summit Avenue and Golf Place has a designated crosswalk. Why does it have a designated crosswalk? Probably because Bethel Synagogue is located on the southeast corner mm -hmm. of Summit and Golf Place. However, in their infinite wisdom, they haven't seen fit to place a similar crosswalk on Prospect Avenue and Golf Place. Now, I would think that there would be more congregants coming to the synagogue from Prospect Avenue from the high-rise developments than are coming from single-family homes west of Summit Avenue. There is a need for us to make our safe, a city safer than it is. And I'm speaking now specifically of Prospect Avenue. It's a highly traveled street. It is a bus route. And there is a desperate need for designated crosswalks. I'm asking the council to seriously consider placing designated crosswalks on Prospect Avenue at Berry Street, Prospect Avenue at Golf Place, Prospect Avenue and American Legion Drive, and Prospect Avenue at Atlantic Street. We need them. It's very important. I see pedestrians trying to cross streets, uncertain of whether or not it's safe to cross because they don't have a crosswalk to use. And it would make our city safer. And these uh, crosswalks are needed on other streets that I mentioned to you last year including Summit, Passaic Street, Essex Street, Polifly Road, all of which are lacking designated crosswalks. So I hope we can get some action from the City Council in saying to it that this is addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I, we have, there's a study being done right now by traffic, because I asked, and I saw you were here, I asked the City Manager if we had any news on particularly American Legion and golf in that area. So. We're awaiting some type of report from them for the possibility of a crosswalk. I definitely believe in one at American Legion. I think that constitutes one there. Barry, possibly golf. I would. Have, I didn't really look at. But uh, well, I am. Um, you know, an intersection is an intersection. Right. You know, we have we have four-way intersections. We have T intersections. Three of the intersections on Prospect Avenue are T intersections and they're not as recognizable to a driver as a four-way intersection is. Right. And they are in greater demand to have this address I for understand. those types of intersections. The scary part for me, though, is if you put a crosswalk in the middle of a block, yep. it's not a stop sign. It's, excuse no, no, me, may I, it's no, not I, no, the middle of the block. But it, it's at an intersection that only has two stop signs, okay? So it's a through street, correct? Same no, prospect, for a, instance. there are stop signs on the side streets at on those side locations. Street. So if you're crossing a cross prospect on American Legion, and you put a, you that's put a, a four one. that's a four way intersection. It's, no, it's not, not a T intersection. No, American Legion is not a four way. Stop. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. At Prospect Avenue, it's four way. No, I make a left. It doesn't left become left. a T intersection until American a, Legion and Summit. I make a left Summit. on American Legion every day when I go to work. It's not a four way stop. So yes, it is. Not at Prospect. No. That's no where the railroad tracks are, and that's where the bridge going over the railroad tracks is located. It's not a four-way stop. It's not a four-way stop, but uh, you're great. We'll I, talk about I it. I live on you Prospect know, Avenue. I know the intersection. Okay. It's a four-way intersection. I, I beg to differ on that. American Legion runs it's through. It's a four-way intersection, but it's not a four-way stop. There's not four stop signs. It there. doesn't have to have four that's, stop signs. Okay, you originally said stop. I'm sorry? Originally, I thought you said four-way stop. That's originally, I think, believe that's what you said. It's a four-way intersection. But what I'm saying is, if you have a stop sign here and here on the cross street, you put an inter you put a crosswalk there, right? You just mentioned before how people aren't paying attention when they drive. All right. Uh, yes. I see so many close calls at Thompson and Prospect every day because we put a an inter at an intersection very similar to that. We put a crosswalk there with no stop signs to stop the traffic, and we get 10 near misses every day. 
So it's you mean by the hospital? By the hospital. Well, you put a crosswalk in there. Yeah, and it's, it's, you take your life in your hands when you cross that crosswalk. Well, Plenty you know people. what? I have to tell you this. I mean, I it's hear this. protected by the law. I hear this from, uh, from certain sources, and I have to it's tell you, if you you're implying, if you're implying that it is not safe to cross at a crosswalk, and it's safer to cross where there is no crosswalk, I can't believe that statement. I believe, I have a police, an ex-police officer here that tell you that crosswalks in the middle of the block like that where there's a it's there's a, it's that, not the middle of the block Thompson is I'm trying to tell you that it's an intersection I understand a T intersection hey, no, no, is as much of Mr. an Smith. intersection Mr. Smith. as a four-way intersection five minutes now Mr. Smith it's a three-minute rule I'm sorry I apologize but I have a young lady waiting to speak here okay. thank you Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. My name is Dora Mae Davis, Hackensack, New Jersey. I would just like to add on to what Reverend Carolyn Davis was stating earlier. There's nothing wrong with Ms. Cajolia questioning the law. What was wrong is her words spoke hatred to a segment of people that could lead to violence and threatening humiliation. So I just want you to think about that. Everybody does have a right to their opinion, but it was the hatred in her heart that she had towards a group of people that has everyone in an uproar. So just think about that, please. God Thank bless. you, Ms. Davis. Anybody else? Seeing none, motion to close. Offer. All in favor? Aye. Aye, none opposed. Any motion to close the meeting? No, we don't, we just did. Go ahead. Do you want to do council talk? I forgot no? we got to talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. Uh, Carol, I'm going to go. Real quick. Oh, I, 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 um, I just wanted to um, acknowledge um, Mr. Arenberg mentioned the dedication ceremony for the M&M &M, um, building today. It was really, really an amazing experience. Um, we had the um, Malone and Marinelli families there. Um, so it was a little bit of um, you know, a history lesson on, on how involved they were. Um, we had current board members, um, past rec board members and employees. It really was a nice turnout. Um, and besides the building being absolutely beautiful, just the feeling inside and, and picturing all of the kids being there. You had um, Hackensack Junior Wrestling, Hackensack Junior Basketball there. You had so many different um, sports groups just you know, excited to see this new space for all of the youth and seniors um, of Hackensack. So it was, it was an amazing, amazing um, day. Um, another dedication ceremony at the end of June was our community garden. Um, it really turned out to be a nice space for those of you who have not been down there. It really is amazing um, to see what our community garden turned into. Um, you know, you go past some of the other towns and you, you see what they look like, but our, um, our residents really put their heart and soul into these beds and our DPW did an amazing job of, of helping out and, and getting these um, beds going. So if you have a chance, stop in there and see the community garden. Um, and I just want to acknowledge um, Mr. Lowry. Um, you, you missed, uh, we recognized you a couple months back and you haven't been back. You've been touring America, you told me. <laughs> so we just wanted to acknowledge you and, and say thanks for your service because we didn't have a chance to in, in person. So we appreciate your service and thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks, Steph. Um, I'd like to say, you know, we started tonight with our police department promotions and, you know, it was great to see, you know, that we're rebuilding our police department once again. And we had a group of fine young men who worked their way up through the ranks and were here with their families and friends to, to acknowledge that wonderful achievement. And uh, thanks to you, Ted, you know, for being a big part of all this. And you could see genuinely that the police department respects your decisions and, and the way things have been, been changing in the right direction. So thank you, Ted, for that as well. Uh, I also was at the M&M ribbon cutting, and I have to say the building was just absolutely spectacular. Uh, I guess it's not really open till August 12th officially for folks, but once August 12th comes, if you haven't been there, go take a look. I mean, it is really, really great. I mean, our kids have long, long overdue in just serving something as, as, as great as this and, and really, I mean, just to see them in there playing sports, 
the, the after school room where you know we have a pool table and air hockey and you know a place of s safety where our kids can go and enjoy and feel safe and, and participate in something other than you know videos with the, with their thumbs right get get a little more exercise and we're looking forward to the new senior activities I mean this is going to be a different type of senior center it's not in competition with uh, the, the Martin Luther King Center or with <coughs> excuse me I have a <coughs> bad cold. Winbroken Plaza, this is more providing recreational activities for our seniors, and there's a lovely <coughs> lounge area there for folks to meet and to sign up to take some of the classes, and we're working on getting all of that put together. <coughs> it was, <coughs> excuse me, it was so nice to hear some positive remarks tonight, uh, especially about the, uh, the, the, the progress we've made in uh, helping with some of the flooding issues. And again, thanks to Ted, thanks to our DPW, and everyone who's worked so hard to really try and make that a priority because it certainly is a quality of life um, impact for so many of our residents. And thanks to the Riverkeeper for, uh, thank you for showing up tonight and we appreciate all of your efforts. I mean, uh, we, we often forget that here we have the Hackensack River, you know, running right on our border. And you know, on many days, you know, it's really it's a beautiful sight, and with a lot of the development and activities going on there, people, you know, get to have that gorgeous view. So thanks for helping keep it clean. I always like to talk about uh, some of the things briefly that were highlights of the docket tonight. Uh, we we approved. We're doing upgrades to the Atlantic Street Garage. You know that that's open to the public and it's being used by Hackpack. That uh, city garage has. It's been a number of years since maintenance has really done to the extent that was needed. So we're really going to address all of those issues and, and turn it into something that's not only safe but amenable in appearance as well. We're also doing some parking lot paving. I think Lot E is part of that activity as well. That's one of the parking surface parking lots in the city that really needed to be done um, on top of many of the street pavings that are already in progress. Uh, two things on here tonight as far as redevelopment moving forward. There was uh, a designation of Anderson Street of a developer, uh, you know, looking at the Rudy's property <clears throat> combined, you know, moving down through where that Chinese restaurant is and incorporating the city property behind it and turning that into a nice development. So we're making good strides moving forward with that, as well as the record property. You know, the record property is starting with their phase one. There are, you know, some sewer issues, or sewers that run underneath that property. And tonight was a step in trying to uh, put that in, in its proper place so that progress can move forward. Uh, again, wonderful news. The city, you know, is certainly looking better and better each day. And uh, we know we have a long way to go to get the redevelopment completed, but we're certainly seeing progress, and that's, that's a wonderful feeling. Uh, personally, I think, you know, when you see folks walking on Main Street or the corresponding streets, the parallel streets, the intersecting streets, everyone seems to be walking a little bit more lively and with a little bit more of a smile on their face because I think they do recognize and see the progress and, you know, are coming to enjoy the fact that Hackensack is going through a rebirth. Thanks again, everyone, for coming and look forward to seeing you again. <coughs> You're up, Leo. Yes, sir. Congratulations to the new lieutenants. And I was happy to see the final of the M&M building finish. It's a beautiful building. I am going to serve it to different kind of sports. You know, you can do basketball, volleyball, wrestling. You can play even indoor soccer. And we got the room with the different tables. Kathy, you can go and play ping pong with me if you want to. Uh, I am glad to hear that the city manager is going to enforce the rules and no bicycles on the side, uh, sidewalks in Main Street all over, okay? I am glad to hear that the flooding problem is being taken care and the paving program is going to start maybe next week and we're going to start with different streets and different parts of the city. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I guess Dave is on the phone. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would too want to congratulate uh, our five new lieutenants. I wish them the best of luck. Um, may they stay safe through their career. You back? Go ahead. You're up. Okay. Uh, you know, everybody spoke about the Eminem building. Definitely, if you get a chance, go check it out. It's a beautiful building inside and out. Um, very impressed with the uh, Hackensack being the first fine free library. It was like the, the fines were so minimal. It was like just the thought of, you know, paying library fines, most people would keep the books, but uh, 
we're ahead of the curve on that one. We were the first city to do it, and uh, other cities have followed suit already. So that was great. Um, now that the M and M building is done, it's on to the next thing. You know, I mentioned uh, when we dedicated the building tonight. I mentioned you know we've already done the Atlantic Street Park, the uh, Hack Pack. We've done the Splash Parks. We've done the in the middle of doing some uh, recreational stuff as far as new playground equipment in some of the parks, including Stive. I think then we're going to Columbus and some other areas, working on all that. And uh, next one is the sports facility in Johnson Park. So that's that'll be underway soon. Uh, actually, the start of it was tonight. Tonight was the first uh, money pass that didn't have to do with the remediation down there, correct? correct. So that was a good thing. I want to thank Caitlin from uh, the Hackensack Riverkeeper uh, from coming down and giving kudos to our clean communities. That's a great event. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sims gets very involved with that. He's at, uh, he's all over the place with the with the kids, and uh, I get down there where whenever I can. That's a great event. We do it twice a year, and we appreciate the Riverkeeper's help on that. And uh, we're working hard on the CSO project. It's you know there's only three CSO towns in in Bergen County with one of us being Hackensack, and uh, we're ahead of the curve on that, but uh, won't be too far down the road, we'll have it done, so that's a good thing. Uh, setbacks were mentioned. All new buildings on Main Street have setbacks that are farther back than the buildings that were there before. 18 feet. 18 feet on Main Street. Eight, 18 feet on Main Street is a setback, that's the law, okay? And I think 10 or 12 on the side streets? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's right in it's right in the rehabilitation uh, plan. Polifly Park. Um, oh, the community garden too. Another another great event got torn down tonight. People coming together, volunteers coming together. Uh, free labor. Ninety percent of the money was volunteer money. They came up with money and materials to do a lot of that work, and uh, somehow that turned into a bad thing instead of a good thing. Uh, it's amazing to me. Uh, most of that money was donated or raised by those people. And uh, we helped them with some dirt and some equipment. That's it. But uh, that had nothing to do with fixing a whole park. Um, what else? I had something else. I can't think of what it was. Well, you have nothing, Dave? That's it, folks. Everybody get home safe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>